The Java spline tool allows you to place depth, color, and spec along the path of a curve. You can also use it to erase, paint to freeze, and also make planar and set absolute height. So with the tool activated, the left mouse button will place points for the curve. If you click in between points, it will place a new point on the curve. And if you right mouse button on a point in the curve, it will actually scale up that point in the curve. Not a good idea to edit the ones at the end if they have a kink like that one does. So let me move it over a little bit better. If we want it to project through the mesh and go to the back side of the polygons, we can turn off this feature here, ignore back faces, but I want to turn that on for now. We can also make it a closed curve. So if we make it a little more circular shape, something like that, turn on closed curve, and now we have a nicely closed curve here. Use spacing is very similar to what we have over here in the brush options panel, except it's a more local option. So if we turn that on, we have a spacing option. We can even jitter the, the spacing, the position of the spacing, and so on. We're going to skip over the curve profiles for now. We'll come back to that later in the video. Then we have a few more options here, profile parameter, depth modulator, and so on. These are a, a multiplier. So if we turn on the depth modulator, it will increase, if it's a positive value, it will increase the amount of depth that's applied or height, depending on what you're doing. The width, this one you can see live. If we turn that up or down, it scales appropriately. Turn that back at one. And the opacity also does the same thing. I, I've already used that tool previously, so I'll set that back to one tool. Um, so if I have my opacity at, say, 50%, and this was at 0.5, that would scale the opacity down to 25% total. Let's put that back at 100. Okay. And then we have a few other options here for controlling the curve. We can set to circle, and that will try and make it a circle as best as it can. So the more points you have, the better the circle shape will be. Let's turn off closed curve for the next tool here and move this a little bit. Okay, so this one, two line, will set this curve into a straight line based off of the first point and the last point. So hit two line, you'll see it made a perfectly straight line. Although if we have them in a semicircle shape like this, where the end point is midway in the line, it'll still move the, the other points, as you see here, in a line. However, the end point will be intersecting with the rest of the curve. With that in mind, if we lay them out in a more linear fashion, or maybe not linear, but uh, all the points in between don't go beyond the existing end and beginning, it works quite well. If we set subdivide or click subdivide, that will actually place more points in the curve. Equalize will space the points evenly, also kind of handy. If we hover over one of these points and hit the delete key, delete points on the curve, including the end and the beginning. Let's place a new one. Next up we have toggle hardness. And this one will allow you to set whether or not this is a curve shape or a hard point. So if we click on that one, you can see now it's actually a hardened point. And we can add more in here and do shapes like this. We'll add in another one, something like that. And let's go toggle the hardness and there we go, something like that. And as it says on screen here, to escape from this, we just hit the escape key. If you hit it again, that will actually clear your curve, but let's undo that real quick. You can also store these curves and then, of course, reload them back in with these two here, store and restore. It uh, saves to file and lets you reuse these curves at a later time. Now, I should point out that they are actually attached to the surface here, not permanently, but if if you were to say store this and re bring it back, it will be at this precise location in world space. So something to keep in mind when you use that function. The other thing we can do here, and they, they're they obvious but kind of hidden and very useful, I think. We can move the curve, the whole curve, using this 
icon here, the four arrows, we can scale it up and down using the magnifying lens. We can also rotate it using the circular arrow here. And you'll notice that the curve points are snapping to the surface underneath it. And yeah, let's go. Looks like doing that caused it to go underneath. So that's cool. Anywho, let's just delete some of these points. Or there we go. So now that we've shown how to edit, add the curve, let's actually use it in a few different instances. Now, just like most of the painting tools, it also respects your brush alphas, strips, masks, and materials. And let's make sure we're on paint mode here. And I'm on a new layer. Got a red color here. And if we select, say, I don't know, that pen alpha there, hit enter to apply and escape to remove it, you can see we've got that shape following along the curve. And we've also done some depth uh, sculpting there as well, or painting in this case. So let's move over to this side and we'll paint in a, or uh, put in a new curve. Let's go back to, um, actually let's go to this pen alpha, our brush alpha, and let's turn on a strip. And let's use the chain. And now if we hit enter, actually let's just do color for this one. If we hit enter, you'll see now we have that chain following along the curve there. Let's hit undo twice, once to bring the curve back, once to undo the application of that curve. And let's also now activate, um, let's activate a different alpha. Let's do this one here, the one that we did on the other side of the ship. And let's make sure we still have that strip activated, we do. So you can layer these abilities. It'll have this basic paint shape, but it will have that chain in there as well. So you can see we've got basically two rows of the chain. So it's neat to stack these types of things to get different effects. Let's turn off the strip and go back to our brush. Now let's explore the different um, types of functions you can do with this tool. We can erase things. I'll show that real quick. Let's go to the paint. And make sure the opacity is at 100. In fact, we'll just go to 200. And if we hit enter, you can see it's erased the paint along the curve. And undo that. Now we can also freeze. Go back to our new layer up top. If we hit enter, that will freeze along the curve. If we hit control enter, it should freeze outside. But apparently it doesn't want to right now. So we'll just freeze that area for now and we can go and paint something in and hit control D to drop the mask and you'll see along that area it has been masked. Okay, back to the tool. Uh, make planar and set absolute are somewhat similar so we'll, we'll just demonstrate one of them. The area here where we have uh, all these scratches and pock marks and whatnot Let's make sure we're in the right layer before we do this. Yep, okay. And if we create a curve in here, it's going to set the absolute height underneath this area. So if we hit, oops, I've got to turn on depth for that. If we hit enter, you'll see it's raised along that curve or lowered, depending on what's happening here, to all the same height. Make Planar basically does the same thing, except it sets everything to the height of the surface and not the sculpted details. Okay, moving on to the curve profiles. This one should be relatively quick. You saw how things looked with the previous curves. In fact, let's just go back to that and place a curve here. So you can see the, the, um, the endpoints are mostly flat. If we set that to sharp, they'll go to points. So you could do mustaches and things like that fairly easily. Oh, looks like I am uh, doing set absolute height for that. Okay, and then make sure we go back to our new layer on the top. And there you go. And undo that. We can also set the edges to be somewhat flat. 
Although, I, I, to be honest, I haven't really noticed any difference between obtuse and uniform myself. But then we can also do shapes like arrows. Let's make that a little straighter. Okay. You can also have it reversed. You can do double arrow. And then there's a different type of arrow. It's just slightly longer.